Hi you folks, in this video we are going to have a look at the law of reflection. What we'll do is take a narrow beam of light, we are going to direct that towards a plane mirror and then that light will be reflected. What we want to do is figure out if there's any relationship between the angle at which the light strikes the mirror and the angle at which it rebounds from the mirror as well. So there's a few bits of apparatus then that we're going to need for this. First of all we need a ray box. The ray box is our source of light. We also need a plane mirror. And the plane here just means that it's a flat mirror. And there's a couple of wooden blocks as well just to help keep that straight. We will need a protractor since we're going to be measuring some angles. We'll need a pencil and a ruler. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the plane mirror and we're going to set it on top of the page so that it's upright and I'm using the wooden blocks here in order to keep that, um, keep that glass stable. Then using a pencil I'm going to draw a line across the back of the mirror and that's because this is the point where the reflection occurs because the mirror is just a, a sheet of glass with a thin layer of foil at the back. So we can then turn on the ray box and direct that narrow beam of light towards the mirror. And what will happen is the light will strike the mirror and then be reflected. So it is much easier to see whenever you turn the lights off. We're now going to make a record of where those light, uh, light rays are going. So we're going to use a pencil, place a couple of crosses along the first beam of light that's going into the mirror and the second beam of light that is leaving the mirror. Now these beams of light have specific names, so we'll go through that in just a second. We can then turn off the ray box and move the mirror out of the way and use a ruler to join up those crosses. This will show us exactly where the path of light went as it entered the mirror and then reflected. So this first ray of light that indicates where the light entered um, uh, and goes into the, the mirror, this is what we call the incident ray. So the incident ray refers to the ray of light that is entering the mirror. The second ray of light where it leaves is called the reflected ray. So we want to measure some angles um, and we're going to need a protractor for that. We're also going to need to add on a line that wasn't actually there. This line is called the normal and the normal is drawn at 90 degrees to the boundary. This normal is important because it allows us to measure some key angles. So the key angles that we're interested in is the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. The angle of incidence is between the incident ray and the normal. We normally label that as I. Um, you can use your protractor, either line it up with the normal or usually it's easier if you line it up so that the zero starts along the incident ray and then you can measure what the angle of incidence is. Next we measure the angle of reflection which is between the normal and the reflected ray. In this scenario the angle of incidence was equal to 32 degrees and the angle of reflection is also equal to 32 degrees. We can then repeat this process for a range of different angles of incidence and measure the corresponding angles of reflection. So what we find is that no matter what angle of incidence that we choose, the angle of reflection is always the same. And this is known as the law of reflection, that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So to summarize some key points here, first of all we have our diagram. We have the plane mirror drawn as a line with a series of dashes behind it and that's just to indicate that it is a reflective surface and not a transparent material where the light could go through it. We have the normal which is drawn as a dashed line at 90 degrees to the boundary. Um, where that light is actually hitting the surface of the mirror. And then the line in red is indicating the incident rays and the reflected rays. 
The key angles that we have are the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Both of those angles are measured between the ray itself and the normal. The measurements that we take during this experiment are the angles of incidence and the angle of reflection and both of those are measured using a protractor. We obtain those results by drawing along the back of a plane mirror, directing the light towards the mirror and then marking on the incident and reflected rays, constructing the normal and measure the angles of incidence and the angles of reflection. We then repeat that process for multiple values of i. What we find is that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection and we call this the law of reflection. I would advise you to pause the video at this point and make a copy of what's on the screen for your revision notes. I hope you find that helpful.